Today we're going to talk about the greatest battle in life. The battle is not against flesh and blood, one author puts it, but against the principalities of darkness. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've talked a lot about our bodies being a perfect recording device. Our bodies a litmus test of what we are thinking, what we are feeling, and what we take into our bodies and what we let out. Our bodies are a recording device, if you will. And they are a way of measuring what is coming in and what is coming out. In other words, it is a temple and this temple represents the spirit that's within you, the God that is within you. And as an offspring of the Almighty God, you are and have the potential to become like him. And, but to do that, you need to watch your thoughts and your words and your deeds. You need to be master of your thoughts, master of your words, master of your deeds. And it starts with your thoughts. You are the master of your ship, as I've mentioned previously. Now, so I've been reading a book and in this book, author suggests the battle isn't against the flesh and the blood. So our battle is not about our body. It's not a about mastering and telling our body what to do. Our battle is about something much more deeper, much more intense than controlling our body. Our, again, our bodies are simply a reflection of what's going on within our souls and what source we are listening to. In a previous podcast, I mentioned that we have the father of lies on one hand and the father of light on the other hand. And the father of lies will tell you lies and will try to imply or try to suggest to your body that you should go for the pleasures of the flesh and try to enhance these pleasures to control and govern your spirit rather than the father of lights who gives you light and truth and truth comes as a result of living the light you have and as you live that light you're given more light and you gain mastery over your body because of the light you let in because of seeking and have an eye single to the glory of God and when you do that you are filled with more and more light rather than with lies the light is taken away so that you are filled with a shadow and so this battle that we're talking about it's not against the arm of flesh the flesh is something that is to be subdued it is something to be used in a manner that is pleasing to God. I love how St. Francis of Assisi references the body. He calls it, paraphrasing from 800 plus years ago, he said that Brother Donkey, referencing his body, doesn't ride him, but he rides Brother Donkey. He takes care of Brother Donkey. And Brother Donkey performs his labors uh, like Eknath Aswarna. He takes that same reference from St. Francis of Assisi and suggests that our bodies are designed to be like an elite athlete. And I'm not talking about running a, a four minute mile here. I'm talking about conforming, not conforming here, let's say governing your body in such a, that it adheres to your divine light, your divine nature from within you. And when you as a spiritual being, as a, a being of light, like unto the Father of lights, even God the Father, you can master your body and your body will be a reflection of what you let into it. So I want to dive into this quote now. I'll read it to you. This one sentence, one liner from Robert A. Russell in his book called You Can Get What You Want If You Find It Within Yourself. It's the first four volume set. And in it, he says the following, Our greatest battle in life is not against flesh and blood, but against the power and principalities of darkness and the evil suggestions so constantly pouring into us. So here we go. I've mentioned this previously. We have the father of lies who has access to our thought process. And we have the father of lights that also has access to our thought process. And they are both enticing us. We learn in a sacred source of scripture to me that unless a man is enticed by one or the other, he will do nothing. So we have this enticement. I remember seeing a movie in the 80s as a little child um, with a 90 something year old man. Um, and he's portrayed having an evil spirit on one shoulder and a, a saintly spirit on the other shoulder. And in that process, he, he hears them both talking to him. Well, it's kind of 
not like that. But this messaging is has access to our thought process. And our thought process can only have one thought on the thought stage at a time. So how do you replace the evil, the father of lies? You replace it by good, the father of light and truth. You think on virtuous things. You think on good things. You, you fill your mind with good. And then you're not resisting evil. You're simply letting it like water off the duck's back flow over you, through you. But the key is, is you're filled with light. And where there is light, there cannot be darkness. And the more light you receive, the more you're filled with it. And the more it is portrayed and radiated through your body, through your presence. And all ships rise when the tide rise. When you are filled with greater light and become a greater leader, more godly, then those around you can feel it in your presence. And they are lifted to a higher level because you see better and more good in them and they see more good in you. You find what you're looking for. And when you're looking for good, you're gonna find it and you edify it and you lift it and you find more and more and more. So this battle is not against the arm of flesh. You're not trying to mortify it or whip it into shape. You're not saying, I'm just going to go to the gym and, and it'll take care of itself and my body will just be whipped into shape. Yeah, for the past two weeks, I've been going to the gym every day, except for Sundays. And I'm feeling it. It's transforming my body. And I feel that pressure daily, that intense growth, almost like growth pains from my youth. And it is a very real thing. I'm not just trying to whip my body into shape. I'm simply trying to subdue my body to the light within so that it can perform better, so that it can run without being weary and walk and not faint. And as my wife mentioned to me in our 20 years of marriage this year, I've never exercised this much before. Part of it's because I've been 60 plus pounds overweight for so long. And now that I've trimmed down of about 40 pounds of excess weight, I still could use another 20 to lose. But now that that has gone, I have that excess weight off my back. I have the energy to exercise and make it a regular routine. So long story short, you become what you think. And there are things, the father of lies, attempting to distract you and push your thoughts away from the Father of Light and live those true things and think on those virtuous things, the shadows and the darkness have no place in you. And then you can become more godly. Then your body begins to follow and shape after your thoughts. Then you can perform your labors without being weary, without being downtrodden, but press forward with faith and do what is right and let the consequence follow.